But before we talk about vibration control, I want to talk about how we can feel vibrations, right? So, so let's walk through how this is built. On the left-hand side, you're going to have velocity. Velocity is an RMS velocity, right? So we're going to assume a sinusoid. And we'll walk through the math on how to build this, but we'll do that later. So we're going to assume a sinusoid for this graph. On the bottom, we have frequency, right? And you'll notice very quickly that the graph is, uh, you know, log 10 based, right? So we go from 1 to 10 to 100 to 1,000 hertz. And then we have at an angle up and to the right, if you think about this, we're going to have displacement, right? And so we start up here at 10 millimeters displacement, which is a lot of displacement for a vibration. Um, you will feel that. One millimeter, 0.1 millimeter, 0.01 millimeter, one micrometer, um, 0.1 micrometer, 0.01 micrometer, 0.001 micrometer which is incredibly small, um, not atomic level, but, but very small. And then on the other angle, we have acceleration. And again, this is going to be an RMS, right? So we are assuming sinusoids. So this plot only works for sinusoids. Um, but it does give us some things that we can look at, right? So let's start here on the right-hand side. We have ISO 101816, Vibration Severity Standards for Class 1 Small Machines. These are mixers and blenders in a lab, drills, things like that. They can be mounted or they can be, you know, handheld. Um, they have different classes. Class 2, Class 3 is like industrial machines, right? Like, like big machines, not machine shop machines. And, and so their, their, their standards are a little weird. Um, but generally, you know, between 0.1 mill, millimeter per second and 0.071 millimeters per second, um, you know, you, you have something that's classified as good, right? So not a lot of vibrations. And they're just going to quantify their vibrations based on displacement. Right? Sorry, on velocity. So because it's a velocity, it's a horizontal line. Satisfactory is from 0.71 to 1.8. Um, impermissible is from 0.45 to 7.1. Right? And so they, they give it to you in a table. And if you kind of make some assumptions, you can convert that table to this graph. So obviously, everything above would be kind of bad. You know, over here, they just don't really define it. Right? It's, just not, it's not really defined. You know, you can't define everything. Actually, and technically, this shouldn't have a line there. There shouldn't be a line down. Maybe I can just gray it out. There we go. Um, okay, so I mean, that, that works for small machines. So let's look at this ISO 4866. This is one that's fun because it's um, vibration and shock of fixed structure, so something that, at least in my mind, I understand, um, or, or I think I understand. And you, and you notice that the threshold for shock of a structure is velocity-based, um, and is, is, is in your unsatisfactory region of a, like, mixing drill, right? So, and that makes sense, you know? If, if you think about, like, a, like a really rough drill, Okay, you could if you have sustained levels of vibration on a structure that would damage the structure. You could crack sheetrock, things of that nature. Um, I actually had a really good description of this on a guy's website. He has, um, I think it's vibrationdamage.com. Which is a weird website. I was like, who in the world puts together a vibrationdamage.com website? And it's updated and it's good. Um, my theory is that he's actually just a professional engineer and does a lot of court cases, right? So when one insurance company sues another insurance company, 
you hire an expert, and the expert agrees with whoever hires them, and they come in and they expertise and collect their paycheck. Not a bad gig. No one's going to jail. You're not putting innocent people away or anything, you know. It's insurance money. <laughs> How bad could it be? Um, but so he had some really good stuff on that. So you have threshold, you kind of have minor damage between five and 30 millimeters per second. Um, and above that, you can get, you know, some real sustained damage, right? It was also, there was a really cool document I found. So there was a mill going in and there was an old church and the local council in the UK hired a vibrations expert to come out and say, hey, is the mill going to damage the church? So how do you answer that question? Like anyone want to take a stab at it? Because they're paying you. I don't know if they're paying you a lot, but you're a vibrations expert, so you don't have a lot of other options in life. Right? Um, any idea how you would, like, like, how do you write a document that says, I think it'll be okay or it won't be okay? The mode shapes affect damage? Yeah, yeah, ground vibrations is the main one. So, I mean, this gentleman just uh, looked up standards. There's standards for this, vibration levels, right? Um, looked up the standard vibration levels that have been measured outside of other rock crushing mills measured the distance and said, oh, you know, the vibration levels at the, at the church structure are, are lower than a threshold level, right? Professor that County, was, yeah. your screen is black online. Oh, thanks. Um, there you go. Oh, now it's back? Yeah. Is it still back? Yes, the graph. Is it still, is it still good? Yeah. OK, perfect. That was easy. Yeah, so in that case, it was as simple as, you know, saying that the vibration levels are below the standard, you know, given how far away it is and what we expect them to be operating, and, you know, put it, put a lot of disclaimers in there, say it's an old structure, blah, 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 you know, like good three pages of disclaimers for when you get sued, collect your paycheck, go home, not bad, did good work. Um, this one's really interesting, so I work some with lithium ion batteries. This was a NASA group testing profile for lithium, lithium ion batteries for transport on cargo aircraft based on an ICAO, International Cargo Association Organization or something. International Cargo Air Organization. Um, but it was interesting. So they actually updated this recently. Um, and so they expanded it. But it goes from about 10 hertz to 80 hertz uh, at a constant displacement of like 0.07 millimeters right so they just that's that's all that's what they consider um you know to be a test a good testing profile for transporting lithium ion batteries in an airplane all right what you think about it you know that's um probably pretty close to where a battery resonates that's about the stiffness of a battery they're not super stiff structures like a uh, lithium ion batteries are i mean the jelly roll inside is very soft Right, so it's paper um, and very thin metal. So I would see a resonance in the 40, 20 hertz something maybe, but definitely not in the thousands. Right, like a steel pipe has resonance in the in the in the thousands, tens of thousands if it's thick. So a battery's going to be around there. Not knowing anything about aircraft or batteries, it seems legitimate to me. Um, so this ISO one. This is buildings, um, mechanical vibration and shock evaluation of human body to exposure to whole body vibrations. So you have a threshold of prevention of perception, which is here. This is about what you can feel. And then this is reduced comfort for 24 hours of exposure. Right. So why might that be important? Think about. Welcome to engineering. Think about how you could get sued for that line. 